If you're someone who's looking to purchase your uh, council home, then I've put a great video together um, talking about some of the key questions I'm getting asked as a specialist within this sector. I've done many videos on right to buy mortgages and how we can help clients uh, purchase their home, whether it's a flat or a house, off the council using 100% of the discount within the property but there are lots of other questions what about property types what if you want to buy with somebody else well, how does the affordability work so i've made a video i've got a number of series of videos really around right to buy so check those out but this specific video is talking about some of the main questions that i'm being asked right now in 2021 so enjoy it and i'll catch you at the channel take care Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. We are specialist right to buy brokers and in this section I wanted to just touch on some of the new questions that I've had from right to buy applicants, people that are looking to buy their council homes in 2021. So let's crack on. Number one question, um, can I get a buy to let mortgage for my right to buy application straight away? The answer is no, you definitely cannot. Um, I've had comments put in under it where oh someone's allowed me to do a bridging finance and I can just can I just rent it out um, the way it works is essentially you're telling the council that this is your residential home you're they're giving you this money this discount because you are going to be living in that property okay it's not an investment property it's not a charity fund the government's not giving you this money just so you can make some money out of it so you cannot get a buy to let mortgage there isn't a buy to let lender in the land that's going to give you a buy to let mortgage during your five year redemption penalty, your, your five year period with the council, okay? Your tie in period. So once you're out of that five year period, um, you can get a buy to let mortgage, you can capital raise, you can debt consolidate, you can do what you want, okay? Because then you are essentially out of that penalty. Um, there are ways, so don't get me wrong, uh, a lot of people are coming in and, and maybe buying their council houses and maybe in two years time or three years time they, they look to buy another property and they can rent it out. Uh, there's something called consent to let and there are a number of lenders that will take a view on that individually and will give the applicants permission to let. That's not to say the councils, the councils essentially, from what I understand, they give you permission, a lot of them, obviously you have to double check it yourself, but they're okay with you renting the properties. It's mainly, um, or from what I've heard, it's mainly the lenders um, do not give you that buy to let option. Uh, something else to worry about around um, the next point, I suppose, is debt consolidation. So let's say you go for a two year fixed and my thought is generally, or my experience is generally 90% of the clients that I speak to they tend to go for a five year fix because of that five year tie-in period with the right to buy, um, uh, uh, I suppose, information in the right to buy terms. Um, people say, well, I'm not gonna sell the property and I'm not gonna look to refinance, um, so stick me on a five year fix and then I will look at it. So generally people go for five years. Sometimes people go for two years and there are different reasons. Maybe, maybe they think their um, circumstances will get better. Maybe their partner will go into job um, and is looking to get into get a new job. Maybe they've got some credit issues and they believe in two years time they might be able to go to the high street so they may do a two year fix. So there are reasons why people take for a two year fix but one thing you need to be aware of uh, during that period, that five year period, not many lenders will allow you, or I'm not aware of any lenders that will allow you to do a debt consolidation. Okay, So you can't say I'll buy it and then in two years time I'll refinance because I want to buy a car, I want to do this. A lot of them will allow you to do home improvements. So you could in two years time, in theory, go back and say, do you know what, I want to put a new kitchen and a bathroom, it's going to cost me £10,000, I want to remortgage. Okay, So that could be an option and that's why you would go for two years. But generally a lot of people tend to go for five years. Um, next question is, can you raise some money when you're buying the property? So let's just say you're going to buy a, uh, a house but it's a bit run down, it needs a new kitchen, and you're gonna use the 100% of the deposit, which is fine, you're gonna use the 100% of the right to buy as the deposit, which many lenders accept, but you need an extra 10,000 pounds. Now, that there are some lenders that have got rules around that, so some lenders will give you that, as long as you give them a list of what it's good, you know, what, what you're gonna do for it, um, maybe some quotes, uh, they will accept that, okay? And they will release the money 
on day one of obviously when you complete on the deal. A lot of the other lenders will say we'll release the money once we, you know, once you give us the receipts and you've done the work. Essentially, you've paid the people and you come back to us for the money. Okay, so there's a big difference between that because you either have the money or you don't have the money. So that's another thing about right to buy. The next point around right to buy is about the property types. Okay, it's vital when you're filling in my form or you're speaking to any other brokers, you give them the full property details because a lot of lenders do not like certain properties, um, ex-local authority or local authority properties. And that's got to do with, you know, deck access, whether it's got a balcony access, whether it's got to do made in concrete frames, you know, steel frames. It could be the area, it could be um, the number of floors, whether it's got a lift. So it's vital you speak to an expert and someone who deals with this stuff day in, day out. Otherwise, if you go to a standard sort of lender, I suppose, they wouldn't have a clue. They, they probably, um, you know, don't come across or they will only know about their own product, okay, where, you know, there are a number of uh, lenders out there, I think over 30, 40 lenders that offer right to buy mortgages. So it's vital uh, you speak to a specialist. So that's another point. Next point is, can you, can I buy a right to buy, but it's really my mum's property. I live there and I've been living there all my life. However, my mum's now old or my dad's now old. Um, but can I use my income and my age and my income rather than doing a five-year mortgage, which is unaffordable, can I use my circumstances? They still need to go on the mortgage, guys. So yes, the answer is yes, you can. Uh, let's just say you're going to do it with your parents. Um, you've got a couple of options. You've got one lender that will still want 5% contributions from yourselves. Okay, so although you've got the discounts, let's say you get a 100K discount, they want, say the property is worth 200 and they're going to give it to you at 100 they still want 5% of 100, okay, so 5,000 pounds coming from your own funds. They want some skin in the game, okay? Uh, there are other lenders that don't want that, okay? It comes down to rate and affordability, okay? Obviously, you'd prefer not to put any money down if you could, um, but, you know, that is available because some lenders don't have an age group and will ignore your parents as long as you've got the affordability and we're not using any of their income, as long as you can make the deal work on your income. Um, depending on which lender we go with, it's got to do with the property types, affordability, credit profiles, vital, okay? So if you've had blemishes on your credit profile, it's gonna make it very, very hard um, to get that type of deal where you're trying to do it with, you know, with your parents and so forth, okay? So you need to generally have a good uh, credit profile on that. So that's another point around right to buys. Um, can you do right to buys for multiple applicants? Yes, we can. Obviously, I've touched on it there, so you can go up to four applicants uh, on that. Um, the process around the right to buy. Generally, what we say is, look, come and have a discussion with us. Let, let's have a look at the property. Let's see if it's mortgageable. Let's look at you as a client. Let's see if you're mortgageable. And then, obviously, we'll give you an idea of where we think we're going to go with it. We'll give you some documentation that we think we need um, at, the, at the initial sort of stage. You go away, go and get your um, right to buy papers done, go and get your valuation done, and then come back to us and we'll pick up the process. I think that's probably the best way uh, people should be looking at it. Like I said, we are a specialist in this sector. I've been doing lots and lots of right to buys. I've got many videos on right to buys and first on buyer stuff. So check out the channel. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.